Right, hi everyone, welcome back to another video. So in the workshop today, we have a bucket. So it's a JCB Q-Fit bucket, and it needs a bit of work doing to it. Right, so these buckets, in my opinion, are crap. They're just, they're not strong enough. They crack all the time. Yeah, they're just, I don't know why people buy them really. I think it may be just the JCB name why people buy them, but they're notorious for cracking around here, like this one's done. I think because of that bit's welded onto there, so it, that weld always causes a weak spot. So it's cracked there. It's cracked at this side. You can see it's had a farmer repair, someone's welded a plate on there, but it's cracked again across where that is. So this side has also had that plate welded on and that's started to crack across there again. And then underneath where they have the wear pads worn in the corner, you can see that's cracked all the way around as well, so that's all to repair. And it needs a new wear edge on it. So these wear edges are too small for a bucket this size to start with. They're, they're only 150 mil edge, and maybe 20 mil thick. As you can see, that's cracked all the way through. And plus it's about worn out, so I'm gonna replace this edge with a bigger one. So I'll replace it with a 200, 200 mil wide by a 25 mil thick bucket edge. So it'll be a lump stronger than that one. And you get a lot more wear out of it as well. So I think the first job I'm going to do is cut the edge off. So because I'm putting a bigger edge on, because I'm putting a 200 on instead of a 150, the edge will be stuck out further. So what I can do with this, the quickest way to get the ed edge off is just to slice straight down the back of the edge. So I'll lose that 30 mil lip, but then the straps that are underneath, I can take 30 mil off them, so they'll be 30 mil back. So then I'll get that overlap again then the edge will sort of be out here. So I'll turn it upside down, slice straight down the back of it, get that edge off as fast as I can. Right, so that's the upside down. So we'll just slice straight down the back of there now with a grinder all the way across and get rid of that edge. You can see on the bottom now where them pads are that's cracked around there. Same at that side as well. Right, so I've got the edge cut off now and that's all cleaned up. So I don't know what type of steel these buckets are made out of, but I've never, you never usually see any other type of bucket crack like what these do. So it's cracked down there, look. 
that side's cracked as well. Same on that weld, that weld's cracked, and on the other side. If you look at here, that's cracked all the way around there, on that, that corner as well, starting to crack. And it hasn't really worn much off it, so it's not like it's, you know, it hasn't done a great deal of amount of work. And then this side as well, that's also cracked from there as well. So, yeah, it's, I don't know why they crack like they do. Right, so I've got them bits that were welded on the side gouged off and I'm going to cut some longer plates out that come down to about there just as an extra gusset to cover over where it's been welded up before. Obviously I'll do one at this side and then same at the other side. So I'll cut them out now. So I've got these plates cut out, they're going to go down the side there to patch over where the crack is. And I'll put a bit of an end on it, just so there isn't a straight runner weld across there for it to crack across again. So I've got them ground out, so I'm going to weld them up first before I put these on. So the, the sides were bowed a little bit, so I've put a prop in there just to force the sides out a bit. Um, it is bent as a side, which doesn't help, but just straighten that bit out a bit because when I weld that up when it cools down it'll shrink a bit and it'll make it worse so that prop will just help it to keep straighter there's a cracked weld up the other side as well the same yeah so there's this weld I've ground that out to weld up as well I've just got the clamp over it holding the prop in but
So I've got them plates welded around there now. Um, I don't think I videoed it, but when I gouged them side bits off, I also gouged out these cracks that were everywhere. So I've been around them, I've welded them up. And I think if I don't do anything with these, they'll only crack again. So I've plasma these plates out. So they'll go around there like that, just to spread the load a bit. And then I'll weld all the way around there. And then one at the other side. Um, I've got them cracks welded up. Whether I plate over them as well, when I get the edge on, I'm not sure yet, but I'll get these welded round. They'll be a bit to press to make them to fit, because obviously that's on the roll of the bucket. So I'll have them to make fit. Right, so that's then pressed near enough. Put that down there, attack it, and then I'll pry that side down. So I've had to press this one two ways because the pad has been pushed into the bottom of the bucket. So I've had to press it a bit that way and a bit around this way. So I'll attack it there and then prise it down on that side. So that's both of them tacked on, they're pulled down quite nice, little tiny gap there. The other one. Could have done with it a little bit more that way, but I'm committed now, so yeah, we'll get them welded round. Right, so that is them all welded round now. So what I'm going to do now is tip the bucket back the right way up. So I could sit the edge on upside down, but I prefer to tack them on first with it right way up. You can check everything's right. The bucket's level with the edge. Uh, and also it has a bit of a bow in, in the floor. So if I tip it the right way up, I can put a winch in the floor and winch that back straight. Um, and then I usually prefer to weld them up, clamp down to my bench, but there's a lot of stuff on my bench. So. 
So yeah, I'll, I'll get tipped the right way up. I'll bring the edge round and then decide from there what to do. Right, so this is the edge that we're going to put on the bucket. So it's 200 mil wide that way, 25 mil thick. It's a HB 500, so it's a harder wearing edge than a normal mild steel one. A lot harder wearing. So this is it. This is the size of the edge that was on the bucket originally. You can see how tiny it is compared to that one. So in my eyes, these should only be used on little, little loader tractor buckets, not on you know big. Teleport buckets like that, it's stupid putting one on that small. This one, like I say, it's a lot harder wearing and it'll be a lot stronger on the front of the bucket with it being thicker and wider. So we just need to chop it off down that line now. So so the edge will be 25 mil wider than the bucket, so you get a strip to weld down either side. So I'm just gonna whip that off with the grinder because me the gas bottles are still piped up onto me. Um, profile table so by the time I've got them swapped round and set up I could have already had it chopped off So I've got the edge cut to length and cleaned up. So I think I am going to put the onto the I am going to put the bucket onto the bench. I think it just makes the job so much easier when you've got something to level and flat to clamp everything down to. So I'm hoping I can reach over with my forklift and sit it on without having to move log splitter.
So I've got the edge underneath the bucket now, but you can see it's not, it's a long way off there, same at that side. And I've got some bits under the back to lift the back up, but because the floor's bowed, that's why it's not touching there and there. So I'll have to put a, a winch in the middle and just winch it back a bit, winch it straight and then it should fit. I think I can take this out now. I don't need this in, in anymore because it's going to get in the way where the winch needs to be. Right, so I've got this edge tacked on now, so I've got the winch in the middle just to pull it down, just pulled them sides down so it touches all the way across. Um, so when I weld it up and when I unclamp it, it probably will bow back a little bit, but it doesn't matter. Um, because these buckets, they don't have much strength in the middle, you know, all the force comes down these sides, so the sides always wear out first. So if it does have a bit of a bow, that way it'll, it'll probably be beneficial if anything because then it will wear the edge more evenly because there'll be you know, a bit of preload on the edge when it pushes onto the concrete. But yeah, uh, so now that's, that's fine, we'll can start welding it up now. So my previous job before I set up on my own was fabricating buckets like this. I welded on a lot of these edges, probably, probably about 200 maybe, and I welded. We never preheated any of them and we never had any bother with welds failing or cracking. The edges always wore out before the welds failed. But I am going to preheat this one a little bit. I'm not going to go wild. I'm just going to give it a bit of a warm up um, just to do the job properly.
Right, so that is the edge welded all the way across the front. I've done quite a few runs of weld around there because that is like the main strength. You know, there isn't much strength in them welds. So this side. So we'll wait for that to cool down now. And then we can take the winch out and take all the clamps off. And then we'll have to turn it over and then weld up on the back side. Right, so I've got that unclamped and the winch taken out. It is just a little bit bowed. But that's because the, the floor of the bucket was stretched, not because of the weld. But like I say, it's, it's not worth worrying about the little bit of force that it would take to straighten that out on the floor. It's, you know, it's not a problem. So yeah, I'm not worried about that. So I'll lift it off, turn it upside down and weld up underneath now. So the last few bits of weld to do, bit in there, bit around that, a few bits in the middle, bit around that, a bit at that end, and then that should do. So they're pretty poor of these buckets really, there's all sorts of patches I could weld on to make it stronger, but that's not really what it came in for, it only came in for a new edge and weld up a few of the cracks. So that's finished now, so them, with their mixture, because it's on the side, then bits under the floor, new edge on, should have a bit more life left in it now. So it would have been better if I strengthened up the floor, put some more cross, cross plates and that in it, but that's not my job, it's not what it's coming for, so done what the customer asked, so yeah, that's that job done. So yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.